Reconnect and heal today. Welcome to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network that broadcasts in 136 countries. And Dr. Turndorf, turn on the love on Binge Networks TV, and we're also streaming live on YouTube. So could you use some comfort? I think the answer is yes. Today is all about comforting you. Comfort You is a song, a video, and an inspiration for a global movement for our human family to connect in a new way. Soul Twin Messiah, who wrote and recorded the song, have planted the seed and created the hashtag Comfort You as a gathering place for all who feel attracted to the idea that offering comfort, support, and love to one another is a worthy step on our journey toward creating peace in the world. The more united we become, the more we can heal past damage and trauma and move forward together in harmony as we create a world in which we are all better supported. And this will give us the bandwidth to make significant enough change happen to be on the road to recovery for ourselves, our planet, and for all other forms of life with whom we share this sacred home. So I am so excited to bring you Soul Twin Messiah, Kip Baldwin, Evan Hirsch, this is the first time you're going to be hearing their incredible new song, Soul Twin, Soul Twin Messiah. And they actually made this video just for their appearance here on the show today. So without further ado, hello guys. Good so, morning, Jamie. So happy to have you, so happy to have you. So is there something you would like to, to tell everybody who's watching and listening about this piece of music that we're going to hear for the first time we want to just let it let it rip and then we'll talk what what do you feel oh we just let it rip and then let's talk about it all right so bob my dear engineer let her rip <laughs> You saw I started like grinning from ear to ear the minute I heard the first strain of the music. It has a tendency to do that to people we found. Yeah. So tell us, tell us everything. Tell us about this incredible piece. It's so, I just, it's, it's got such a mixture of so many different genres of music from hard rock to folk to soul, everything. So tell us how this came about like everything else that we're doing we're just sharing what's being shared with us to share it it feels like a song for the times uh, but we actually wrote it you know long before COVID and everything but i can't think of a better song for what we're all going through and just the, the bringing of comfort to one another i can't think of anything more important that we can be doing right now and it's something that we can all be doing it's not not out of reach for any of us we can all share that kind word that smile that loving embrace for the people who want those um, always ask first, but you know we can always comfort one another. We can always, and what is comfort? Comfort is connection. Comfort is support. These things. It, this is how we rewrite the story: one connection, one comforting moment at a time. And it seems like a 
the logical first step. It's fundamental. It's a catalyst for further growth and evolution and therefore change and hopefully improvement. And for me, it's really about getting real. You know, we all have a buildup of so much unresolved trauma, frustration, um, disconnection, loneliness, etc. You know, being feeling misunderstood. How often does something frustrate us in life and we really get true resolve? It's all all the emotional little remnants have been totally soothed and, and managed and, and we can face the next situation completely refreshed. How often does that happen to any of us? And so this is like the big one. It's if we're stuck with all this trauma and these stuck emotions and this uncertainty about what to do, where to go, what, what's my role in the world? What's my purpose in life? I wanna do better, I wanna help, I wanna be part of the change, but I don't have that tangible thing I can do besides recycle and do some beach cleanup. And you know, it all seems so futile, but I maintain that that's all part of a subconscious thought process. In other words, a program. And so, in order to think in a different way and respond to life in a new way, then we need a, re a refresh, a reset, and we need to pivot. And so instead of being stuck, just doing the same habitual motions and, and coming from the same emotional place, this idea of comforting you, soothing, melting away some of that stuck energy so we can arise fresh and face the world with a new perspective. And that's the bottom line is let's flick that switch. So instead of being stuck in the us versus them and the I'm judging this and that'll never work and you're an idiot, it, then we can shake off some of that and actually get present. <sighs> Breathe, connect, really listen, understand, share and do some mutual healing so that we can see the whole world, especially one another, even ourselves, through a new clear set of eyes. And for me, that's really what the comfort you component is, is that healing trauma and reprogramming subconscious minds that are keeping us stuck in a reactionary mode and a mode of feeling not a lot of confidence, not a lot of certainty, not a lot of hopefulness that things we can do will affect the kind of change we want to see in our own world and in the world at large. And, and this programming that Evan's uh, touching on, this isn't how we've always been. You know, it's, it's largely the story of Western civilization, the rugged individual, I'm doing everything on my own, that's contributed to our loss of feeling of support, of tribe, of purpose, all things that we, 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 we know that we desire the things, we've had cultures that had these, okay, we've done this experiment now. Largely, the, from my perspective, one of the uh, most insane aspects of this modern story that we're telling is this idea that we could be disconnected from one another in any way at all. And then that disconnection leads to us lacking, feeling any support. Okay, well, how can I do anything? What's my purpose here? I, I don't even know who I'm connected to or why or what I'm doing things for. And so by doing this basic thing instead of trying to explain to people we can't be separate instead of trying to explain to people why they need support or why they lost support this is an actual action that we can take to demonstrate these things and the importance of these things just in how good it feels in the moment of bringing that comfort to somebody or receiving that comfort again it establishes that connection that we've been denying ourselves and it also brings that support that we all so desperately long for and so for us to declare that we are we're proclaiming ourselves starting a global movement for comfort based on the song the video the concept the necessity and so this is our chance to say oh i don't know to go from oh, i don't know what to do to say no i'm part of the change i'm in the comfort you movement i am opening myself i'm allowing myself to be a conduit 
for the emotional nurturing that we give one another so that we can rise together and implement the kind of change that that we want to see in the world it's not for everyone not everyone feels a calling or an inspiration to be part of the change to help usher in a new age a more enlightened and expanded consciousness um approach to to life as as a human entity as a as a you know, a super organism, if you will, of all of us. And so this is for those who feel that itching, that calling that God, I want to do something. I, I know I can do something. And this is something you can put your heart into. And it's something so easy. It's just declaring yourself a part of the movement and being a resource, being someone who is an open conduit and, and just a, a big pillow of love to just embrace and, and catch the, the falling of, of humans, again, confidence and hopefulness and their inspiration, their motivation, the reason to do the things that we do in order to bring about the change that we want to see. So this is an awakening. It's a call to action. And it's a, a big, huge spreading. My arms don't even fit on the screen. It's a big, huge spreading of arms to embrace our human family with the love that we feel we need in order to make the kind of change that that we're just wringing our hands wishing we could make but who's going to make it is it the politicians the business leaders the influencers the celebrities yes. who i mean those God, are yes. narrow when you look at the percentage how many people in the world and how many are celebrities tiny how many people in the world how many are politicians tiny how many people in the world how many are business leaders tiny for instance oprah has what 12 million or the dalai lama has somewhere around 12 million followers that's such a, even with that, that's a small, small fraction of the number of people on the planet that you can actually influence. And he's one of the people who has the greatest influence, yet that's how many people he's influencing. That's how few. Yeah. And to touch on what um, Evan mentioned just real briefly, I think it's worth expanding on, is the idea of a super organism. Michael Pollan uh, wrote a book, I think it was called Cooked or Cooking, I, I don't remember for sure the title. But when I was listening to him uh, be interviewed about the book, it was really fascinating because he was talking about how the human beings, when we look in the mirror, we think that's what we are. We are that singular identity that we see in the mirror. In truth, that's not what we are at all. We are exactly a superorganism. We are far more like a piece of coral than we are an individual entity made up of flora and fauna and bacteria. And this is how then outside of ourselves, it's the same thing. Even on an individual level, we're a superorganism and collectively we're a superorganism. And this is not how we've been programmed to perceive of ourselves and our relationship to all things. Oh, I just got a text. Did you hear the little ding? This is from the, uh, the syndicator who says, exciting, so good to see Evan and Kip. Let them know I'm asking for them. <laughs> is that Deborah? Is Deborah? Yeah. Hi, Deborah. Much love. Deborah. <laughs> Thanks for, for joining us. <laughs> That's so sweet, isn't that? We, you know, when Jean left his body, one of the first things I heard him say in this channeled wisdom was, we're all one family, we're all one religion, that religion is love. So the message is very clear. When you listen, it's pretty much the same message in different words, whether you're singing it or speaking it or chanting it, right? Well, it, it, I think I, I love that that common denominator and whatever group you're in, ask yourself why, what is it doing for me? Why do I gravitate towards this one? What support does it offer? And then think what what are my needs and how what are all the ways they could be fulfilled? What we're offering here is something to transcend the the um, the dogmatic, you know, religious doctrine that can be so divisive you're either this church or this temple or this it, it it's it's an either or us versus them kind of thing whereas that that spirituality if you will of love that just simple basking in the human emotion of love connection comfort hopefulness it, it kind of transcends all of that have your religion no one's talking about taking anything away from you but if what you're looking for is a broader connection beyond the walls of your own church you know or the doctrine of your own grouping enter comfort you movement it 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 is universal so you know we all in the in the music world we always talk about music being an international language 
you know, when you strum that guitar, there's no strumming it in Chinese or strumming it in Spanish, you know, there are Spanish style music, Chinese style music, but those guitars are still E, A, D, G, B, E. So um, unless you're using an alternate tuning, but that's another story. <laughs> the point is we hear the beauty of music and we can all appreciate it. And that's, that's you know, it's, it's no coincidence that Comfort You is a song. <laughs> it's music. It is universal, international, and it's accompanied by beautiful imagery of hugs and love and performances and people pouring their heart out and devoting their, their time and energy and creative passion towards this cause of uniting the human family, offering something substantive that we can sink our teeth into and believe in and participate in together and utilize as a tool for helping nudge along this, this big, huge transformation we're undergoing right now. And really change is an amazing thing because the only thing constant is change. We hear that saying, and yet one of the hardest things for all of us to deal with is change to roll with it and accept that things I got used to that I was comfortable with aren't there anymore. They're totally different now. And I have to get used to and get, you know, get comfortable with a whole new set of circumstances or ways of being or laws or rules, or do I wear a mask or not? All of that. And it's, it, again, it's challenging and frustrating and we get caught up in it and we get stuck and we never really heal from it and shake it off. And so comfort you is about getting down to the, that nitty gritty, that point of, inflection from stuck frustrated to hey we can do this we've got support there are all kinds of people in this world who believe in change and are committed to the cause and are taking the necessary action to overcome the programming in their subconscious mind that they didn't put there they had no control over 99 percent of the people don't even know it's there um but once you become aware of wait who is who is making the decisions here who was that speaking who just said what i just said and who told me to say that? What influenced me to go that direction instead of this direction? And so this is about harnessing the power of choice. It's so funny, I'm having deja vu. I can recall saying something very similar to this on your show before years ago about making conscious choices. It's a matter of what made me choose, you know, coffee or hot chocolate today? Or why, you know, why, why do I like chocolate and vanilla and he likes strawberry? You know, it all comes from something somewhere along the line. Someone made one flavor gross for us and we gravitated toward the other or a grandma or beloved figure gave us that one hazelnut thing. And now we always love hazelnut, but they come from somewhere. So all the choices that we're making, they're baked in. So this is about instead of making the choices that are baked in by entities like societies and systems and corporate, you know, influence governments and all that and media, manipulative media, who's trying to make money off of our attention. They put ideas in our head that actually become real for us, but they don't have to be who we always are. We can reprogram, we can find our, our true selves in there, who, who we had the potential to be all along. And Comfort You is right there for that cause as a tool to again, nudge us in that direction down that path of authenticity, presence, connection, support and nurturing and moving forward as a united entity of this human family that we are. I don't know how much science you need to prove to you to, to help you um, feel connected and a part of this super organism, something much bigger than ourselves. Mm. Kip, you wanted to say something. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, uh, one of the most important choices we can make is the acceptance of what is. Moving beyond this idea that we have any control over what's going to happen next. The biggest thing we can do is just learn to move into the moment, move out of that. It's ironic that um, I remember when I was, I don't know, maybe 17, I went to a course with my dad where they taught us about comfort zones and how that you can be in a comfort zone, but that doesn't mean that's a good place to be. You can be in a horrible, horrible place, a horrible relationship, but that can be your comfort zone because what's worse for you than this awful thing you're going to is that fear of the unknown, that fear of what's coming next, that fear of change, which is largely what so many of us are suffering from right now is that fear of, oh my God, I don't know what's gonna happen next. Well, in order for us to break out of this horrible, abusive relationship that we're currently in, that is our comfort zone, all of our comfort zone. This is what we know. This, by us offering comfort and support, say, no, it's okay out here. 
come on, we're, we're all going through this together. We don't know what's coming next. We don't really have any control over it, but we're going to do it together. No one, no one's trying to better anybody else. No one's trying to tear anyone else down. No one's trying to win. We're offering collaboration and support instead of competition and tearing down, which is largely how so many of us are approaching things right now by picking this team or that team. You're right. I'm right. You're wrong. And, and on and on and on. This only keeps this programming um, going and keeps this story rolling on exactly the way it is because this uh, story is 100% ran on division and war and keeping us divided and keeping us confused. It's how it functions. And to touch on um, what Evan was talking about, the things that are programmed into us that we just accept as, um, well, this is just how things are. Um, in the 1940s, they came up with an advertising campaign boys like blue and girls like pink do boys really just like blue and do girls really just like pink hell no it was a marketing campaign then you go back it, you know there's a great um documentary series called um the century of the self which talks about the evolution of pr people need to watch that you need to understand you really honestly and it's not a judgment we've all been programmed in the same way you need to understand that you've been programmed even before you can start to break out of the program. So many people don't even understand. They think their thoughts are their own and they're just not. And we're saying, let's offer some comfort. Then you can go inside, break down those barriers, break down those things that are blocking you from getting in touch with your true self, your source. Because right now, the only thing that's stopping us from living the life that we want is that feeling of love and comfort, uh, support and comfort. That's so true. You know disconnection is the source of all disease disease emotional disease spiritual disease physical disease and so the opposite of disease is connection and that's what you're bringing the com comfort is through the connection absolutely there are false senses of connection out there do you like that football team i like them too yeah let's kill the other team <laughs> It feels connected. It feels connected. It feels like you're one of me. You know, that's that we don't like them. You're one of me. But it's a false sense of connection. Be you careful know, what you believe in. You're talking you about authenticity also. You know, in the last couple of years, I started doing energetic system upgrades, and you have to go into radical emotional nudity. You know, that having the courage to be naked within yourself, then be willing to share your warts and your flaws with other people. And it's always in that leap of faith where you're willing to reveal these deepest, most shameful feelings and you get accepted and heard and understood. This is where the healing comes because we're always walking around with the mask and hiding what we really truly feel, hiding the wounds, the things we think are unlovable about ourselves. And it's when you do that opposite thing of just, I'll be naked with you. I will share with you what I truly think and feel and have you understand me. This is my healing. We have to take a break. We'll be back in a moment. It's Dr. J.B. Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed, tense, jumpy, jittery, anxious, or having panic attacks or angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Are you worried that you or someone you love is going to get sick or even die? Are you depressed and feeling hopeless like the world is coming to an end? Or are you suffering aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, the internet, or TV? or abusing drugs or alcohol, or not eating right, or exercising, feeling like, what's the point? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. 
The Energetic System Upgrade has already helped some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own Energetic System Upgrade healing transformation. To find out more and to schedule your session, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash energetic system upgrade. That's drjamieturndorf, T-U-R-N-D-O-R-F dot com slash energetic system upgrade. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. Find out more about Kiss Your Fights Goodbye at AskDrLove.com. This is Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. This show is for you, the listener. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Hello again. Welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. And Dr. Turndorf, turn on the love on Binge Networks TV. And we're streaming live on YouTube. I'm talking with my dear Evan Hirsch and Kip Baldwin about their new Comfort You movement and video and song the title's track would you just backtrack and tell us a little bit about how you both came to meet each other and how this movement developed would you would you like to share that absolutely could i um make one thing i think it's an important thing i wanted to share yeah. when we were talking about disconnection i think it's important for people to understand there's a difference between being detached and being disconnected it's very important to understand that Aldous, Huck, Aldous Huxley has a book uh, he wrote called Ins and Amines that he wrote actually just before World War II. And uh, it was really fascinating because the times he was describing were so similar to what we're going through now. But within the first five pages of the book, he describes the ideal human being as being the detached human being. And what that means is it's not in caring, it's not disconnected. It's detached from the outcome. It's detached from believing you have control over these things. And I use the analogy of you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It means, yeah, I, I brought the horse to water. It didn't drink, but I'm not upset that the horse didn't drink. I'm, I'm not going to be ruled by my expectations of what should or could be. I'm, I'm accepting what is, and I'm accepting that I'm doing the best that I can in any given moment. I'm not holding on to the past. I'm detached from that. I'm detached from believing I have control of the future. So understanding the difference between detachment and disconnection, I think is really important for your audience to understand. You know, I want to also say that, you know, you, you often use an expression that people might not understand when you say uh, the story, because the, using the terminology, it's just a story, is really a way of subliminally helping people to detach from the story. It's more like you're living the holographic model. This world is a giantly deta giant detailed illusion, a holograph, the story. So you say that so that people will just think, oh, don't get so tied up in it. It's just a story, create a different story. And if enough people create a different story, we create a different holograph, like turning to a different channel. I don't want to watch a serial killer movie. So I'll switch to uh, the Hallmark Love Channel. You know, so you just switch. Exactly. I switch to the Comfort You channel. And you know, people say, but it feels so real. How can it just be a detailed illusion? It feels so real what I'm living. 
my struggle, my financial woes, my loss of my job because I didn't get the jab and on and on and on. What do you say to people when they say, but the story seems real? Well, you, you know, think about how when you're watching a movie or you're playing a video game, these things seem very real. You get very emotionally involved. In it. Now, on one level, you're able to realize I'm just watching a movie. I'm just playing a game. But now imagine you're an actor in a film uh, and you're a method actor. Your whole purpose is to forget that you're you and believe entirely that you are that character in the film. There is no other reality outside the reality of that role you're playing in the film. We are so, not programmed, but we wrote these stories for ourselves to have the experience of, and these are roles that we wrote for ourselves to play. So yes, we have to buy into it entirely, but then we also need to wake up from it at a certain point and be, realize that these are just stories that we are the creators of, and be able to, instead of being the participant, things are happening to, we are the witness that things are happening for and because of. Let me ask you this, Jamie. If, if you're getting married, you're at the altar, and you start crying, you're overwhelmed with emotion, this is your big moment, you love this man, right? Okay, versus you're sitting in the audience at a friend's wedding and you cry because it's just so beautiful and you're happy for her, versus you're watching the Hallmark Channel and someone's getting married and you cry. What's the difference? But, you know, the thing is, if you guys are thinking we're all one, so when I cry for you, I'm partially identifying with your experience, right? So even if it's not happening to me directly, I'm partially identifying with your experience. And this is really, I think what you're, you're getting at is that whatever is happening to you, I need to also put myself partially in your experience. So you're not alone in that experience so that I can cry with you or be joyful with you. Really what I'm saying is it's all a matter of perception. Ah. And whether I'm watching <laughs> a fictional that. program on TV and crying, or I'm at my own wedding, making a significant milestone in my life, the tears were the same, the feelings were the same, whether something's exactly. fact or fish, fiction, whether it's real or on TV, whether it's happening to us or someone else, our reaction is our reaction. And that our is reality. It is you. our perception of it. That is our reality in that moment. So Absolutely. however we look at it, if we're having an experience of an emotion reaction to something we're witnessing, whether it's real, not our business, none of our business, it's the same thing. It's no, I love that you're saying reaction. this. I love that you're saying, you know, I'll, I remember, you know, I trained with Lou Ormont, who was trained by Hyman Spotnitz, who was trained by Freud. So for decades after my doctor, I was trained with this guy who was like a disciple of Freud. And one day in this big group in New York City, all these famous psychoanalysts, this one woman hated my guts. She always hated me, always. She had a thing where I reminded her of obviously someone in her past. And it was so difficult for me to be on the receiving end of her distortion of what it was she was laying on me. And my supervisor whispered in my ear because I was sitting next to him, what do you want to go interfere with her her distortion for. And it was like, bing, that's her reality. That is her reality. I don't want to take her reality from her. That feels real to her. So it's, it was like stretching me to get into whatever it is that she feels, not to argue it or justify it or defend myself. That's your reality. Yeah. So the answer is when someone says, well, it seems so real. Well, yes, it is real. Were you? What you're watching on TV is real. Well, that's not real. No, it is real. You had the reaction. You witnessed it. That's your emotional emotional reaction. Guess what? The memories are stored in your subconscious mind. They affect future outcomes and future emotional reactions and future perspectives. So it is all real. If it's real to us, it's real. Absolutely. To try and deny the reality of what someone is experiencing is the exact opposite of the comfort movement. The comfort mo you movement meets us where we are exactly. If we feel frustrated, we're frustrated. If everything's fine, great, then we're fine. We don't need comfort in that moment. Let's give some to someone else, right? That's really true. Whenever you meet you at a place of acceptance and understanding, not judgment, right. not yeah, whatever you are. But you know what, what you guys are talking about is the essence of what makes therapy healing is that I start with where you are, you know, Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit order, 
his entire philosophy was when you want to create change in the world, he said, you have to enter through the other person's door, but have him leave through yours. So mm -hmm. I have to come in and be with you and understand you and just get with you where you are. And then everything happens from that feeling of I'm not alone. You understand me. This is so comforting, so healing. And then you might just come through my door. And you, you know, know, and you know, this idea of story of hologram of simulation, all of this, I, I encourage people to go and when you hear me or Evan or you or, or anyone talking about things that maybe you don't fully understand and go look this stuff up because right now it's never been so widely studied or thought about that this is a hologram in every science that I'm seeing you've got people pursuing it from um, neurology to physics to you name it uh, computer scientists on and on and on that people are now going, well, the only way to really explain this is if this is a hologram, if this is an illusion. But then beyond the fact that this is a story, an illusion, if we just stop and we think about the fact that all of the things that are happening to humanity in this, in the physical sense, 99% of the challenges that humanity faces are self-created, are the story that we're telling ourselves on a physical level. We don't actually hate one another. We don't actually want to war with one another, but this is the story we're currently telling ourselves. But it doesn't have to be this way. So who's doing it? We're doing it. We're the ones physically writing this story. But you know, Kip, I'm thinking that humanity has been writing this same story since the beginning of time. We've been in war with other countries, with other tribes. It, it, divided this has been the hallmark of the human existence you know well I, I, absolutely I, from what from what i understand yes but i also think that there was a real something significant change after the agricultural revolution i think it was a university in finland that did a, a study and there really wasn't actual organized war until after that point sure there were battles there were skirmishes and things but not in the way that it is now where fear is institutionalized war is the foundation for our economy so i think it's a little bit different yes we've had these um challenges throughout our history but not to this not to the severity they are now now have we gone maybe through cycles if you're looking at say hindu or mayan or, or whatever culture and you've got your different ages epochs yugas and we do we go from the iron to the bronze to the silver to the gold and just start it all over again I don't know. It, it, there's a lot of evidence out there that maybe we do that, but I, I don't think that we've ever been, um, as I mentioned earlier, when you look at indigenous cultures and Native American cultures, they understood the connection we had. Was it perfect? No, but it wasn't, it wasn't nearly as delusional and somewhat, you know, just insane as this story currently is because and I use this and Evan had pointed out, you know, uh, sometimes when you talk about things, uh, they're easy for you to understand, but they're a little bit over people's heads sometimes. But I always use the analogy of us believing where disconnect is, is as crazy as the leaf on the farthest branch of a tree saying it's disconnected to the seed it emerged from. It's just impossible. And yet we have so firmly bought into this idea of the rugged individual that I'm doing it all on my own, that I don't need any help. I don't need love. I don't need any of this. I just need me and money and profit and power and those are the only thing that matters that's kind of you, a little bit crazy so we talk about history a lot and was it this way and was it not and where was it and where wasn't it and you know all we have are our recollections of of someone who's given us information from history and i say let it go yeah let it go we'll never know the mm -hmm. truth we'll never know the significance we'll never know who were warring people and who were loving people what we know is this when we are desperate, we will kill if we have to. And so we talk about, well, the agricultural revolution came along and then you had these big stores of food. More When you hunted and gathered, you grabbed what the land provided, you ate it, you hoped to find more the next day. Once you started growing for yourself and providing more than you needed that day, you now had food stores. And if someone else is starving, they're going to come over with a branch and knock you over the head and feed their family. Instead of watching their family die, they'll just watch you die. That's, that's nature. 
Every, so many animals, there are 5 million plus species on this planet. How many will injure another one to get their needs met? Or the bower birds that are so adorable and build these incredibly beautiful towers, but they go and steal the stuff from the other guy's tower to make their own. They want to get laid. They want to carry on their sperm, their seed, their DNA, because we are all imbued with a program from nature to keep our lines of life running. That procreation is that primary motive, survival and procreation. Just You're just part of a long string of a species and you're just keeping it going, right? So the details of what happened in history aren't as relevant as what we, how we feel and what we want to do now. If we're in a position of desperation, we're going to commit crimes, we're going to be, you know, treat people less than kindly or fairly <clears throat> in order to feel we have our needs met. When we have all our needs met, we feel loved, we got food on the table, nice, warm, comfy home, there's no reason to go kill anyone. There's no reason to go steal from, from anyone, right? So if there was a time in history, forget agricultural revolution, you're living in caves, first person's got fire and the other one doesn't know how to do it yet, they need it to survive, they're gonna do whatever they have to do to get fire from you. That, that's obvious. That's, that's so clear. You do what you need to do to get what you need to get. So here's the thing. We didn't know in the past that we were one human family. Who on earth knew? When, when, when conquistadors came over in the 15th century, how did natives who were anywhere in, in the Americas know those were their cousins? How did they know they didn't? We know now, we have science, we can see the lineage, we see the DNA, we look at very small things nowadays and we see it. So we have new information to tell us, wait, if I'm desperate, I'm, I'm gonna go to, if I need a resource and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it or get it for a price I want it or whatever, we're gonna do what we have to do to get it. So let's find the comfort and the security one day at a time, you know, healing, uh, a lot of modalities for recovery and healing talk about one day at a time, one situation at a time, one meal at a time, one interaction at a time. Now I have to take one break at a time. <laughs> I'll be right back. It's Dr. J.B. Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed, tense, jumpy, jittery, anxious, or having panic attacks or angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Are you worried that you or someone you love is going to get sick or even die? Are you depressed and feeling hopeless like the world is coming to an end? Or are you suffering aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, the internet, or TV, or abusing drugs or alcohol, or not eating right, or exercising, feeling like, what's the point? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The energetic system upgrade has already helped some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own energetic system upgrade healing transformation. To find out more and to schedule your session, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash energetic system upgrade. That's drjamieturndorf, T-U-R-N-D-O-R-F dot com slash energetic system upgrade. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. 
This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's number one international bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, will show you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit without the assistance of a medium, channeler, or psychic. Sign up for Dr. Love's free newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive an exciting gift, a free excerpt of Love Never Dies. And now, back to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello again. Welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. And Dr. Turndorf, turn on the love on Binge Networks TV. And hi to everyone watching live on YouTube Live. So I'm talking with Evan Hirsch and Kip Baldwin, Kip Baldwin and Evan Hirsch, the soul twin messiahs. And we um, are enjoying their launch really of the Comfort You movement. Earlier in the show, we heard there and saw their new music video that they created just for this show. I asked you at the start of the second segment, if you wanted to talk a little bit more about your relationship, how this came about, how you got here. Would you like to? Sure. Yeah, we're happy to share our story. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, I had been retired from the hospitality industry for a number of years and uh, had, had done music and travel and writing and a number of things, but was just looking to bring a little more purpose to my life, feel a little bit pro- more proactive about being the change I wanted to see in the world and then help usher usher in a, a, a more enlightened age, if you will. And so something inspired me in 2016 and I saw Bernie Sanders, the senator, the presidential candidate at that time as as a as a very unique voice among uh, just a cacophony of chaos and government in, in the United States. And I felt inspired. I felt some hope there. and I felt it was something worth putting some energy, attention, um, effort, money, all that towards um, supporting that campaign. And uh, it was at that time that I was I looked for a production team to help me document what I was doing on video. And that's when I went to Academy of Art University, where I was a graduate, um, to ask the um, current angle ran the production department there. Mm-hmm. And I was looking for some a crew to help me produce documentary footage of what I was doing with Bernie Sanders. And essentially, he gave me two pieces of advice. Number one, I was looking to make a documentary, like a feature, like collect material for a couple of years and then edit it together and put out a feature. And he said, rather than do that, nowadays, everything's five, 10 minute viral videos you put up on YouTube kind of thing. Let people follow you as it's happening. And that was one piece of advice. So that encouraged that planted the seed for making shorter format videos. And number two was contact Kip Baldwin. He literally told that that's all he told me make smaller stuff think smaller and contact Kip Baldwin. He died two months later. Bobby so this was like the last great act of his life there's so there's a lot Best going on job ever. <laughs> there's a lot of play here and us being brought together at that point in time in 2016 clearly had some some big significance and so. Absolutely. The uh, Bernie campaign, by the time we got together and started preparing for what we were doing with Bernie, and then I went off to meet the Love Foundation in Orlando, and that that ended up being three weeks, our time just got away from us. And 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 we all know what happened to Bernie anyway at that point, um, and uh, as as he lost out of the primaries and, and was done with that presidential campaign. And so we needed somewhere else to put our attention, our focus. We had some momentum now. We had a team. 
let's do something meaningful. And that's what grew into Soul Documentary, which is you know, Soul, what we've been doing for the last five plus years. And one element of what we do together is make music. We're both musicians, uh, you know, huge uh, music fans, um, music people. And uh, interestingly, we've both been musicians for most, if not all of our lives. And for the first couple of years hanging out together, didn't really play any music together. First year at least, didn't even think to do it. We had done bands, we had done, you know, gigs and the nightlife and all that stuff. And that just wasn't who we felt we were at, at that stage in our lives now. And eventually we gotta make some music. He's got a guitar, I got a guitar, let's sing. And so we did, and, and one thing led to another, playing cover songs, getting a couple little gigs during the 50th anniversary of the Summer of Love year in San Francisco, which we supported in a major way. We kind of shifted our attention from the Bernie campaign to the campaign for a, 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 a redo, if you will, of the Summer of Love 50 years later, but knowing what we know now. And there were so many events and exhibitions and, and things going on in San Francisco go the Bay Area and beyond um, about that 50th anniversary of Summer of Love and we were attached to it. We produced events and did coverage of videos of so most of the exhibitions, at least the significant ones that were going on. And that became the basis for our YouTube channel. And then it morphed into the music element as well. We were making music for some of our videos, um, a lot of original material. And ultimately, we just kind of went crazy once the seed was planted the the bolts of inspiration just kept hitting over and over and over and over. we have like 90 songs that we've written now and um so we're in the process of recording a whole bunch of those ultimately we evolved as as a uh, a musical entity we're really a duo and uh, we we use other musicians to support what we're doing certainly in the studio and uh We've already recorded 18 songs. <laughs> we have so many more that we can work with. We've uh, found a wonderful producer with whom to work, Joel Jaffe at Studio D, and he's been amazing in helping us realize these these songs. And so now we're we're just putting out a whole ton of songs. We're just like on that verge, ready to start releasing stuff. And so we're we're announcing our, our debut song video, Comfort You, um, here with you on the show. We prepared that little promo clip, which is excerpts from the video that we wanted to share here with you exclusively for the first time in the world. So thank you for, for hosting that and, and giving us that opportunity to just share our love and the work we've been doing with your audience and, and you know, however far that goes. And uh, Stay tuned for that video is going to be coming soon, probably the top of next year, we will actually release the comfort you video in its entirety to the world. As it said at the end of that promo we made for you the song the video and, and of course our love support and comfort is our gift to our human family. Um, so that's that's where it's starting and again we've already recorded 18 songs they're sounding incredible we're not taking the credit for that ourselves it's you heard some to, of them thanks to our producer <laughs> i know i was thinking i wish i could share some of them but they weren't in final form so that i couldn't share them right actually yeah. nothing is we we don't have a single song that's actually but i actually was wondering if i would have been able to play any more because kip you did share with me some of the other songs but I wasn't sure how you would feel about that. We, we've been advised that it's best not to release material, unreleased material by people who do releases. So we, we're being cautious. That's why we didn't play the whole video. Got it. We created the little promotional piece. Um, I did I did want to say, you know, the fact it, it us doing this, Soul Twin Messiah being what it is, the 90 songs, the Comfort You movement, it's it's such a perfect example of how you don't really have any control over this and your the story is going to take you exactly where you're supposed to go. This feels like what we were supposed to be doing. Um, while we've done amazing things with uh, Soul Documentary, and we'll probably continue to do amazing things. We have so much content that we want to, you know, maybe do another documentary or, and, and things down the road. But this coming together for the music. It, it's been effortless. It wasn't something we tried to do. It was something that literally the songs just keep coming. It 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 it's not something we had any say in it happening. I I don't know. I'm looking at our songs, even comfort you, and I'm like, oh my God, we're that says that in that song. Wow. And I'm learning from the our own songs. It's amazing. And things that um as you know, I you know, the day that we were supposed to first meet, I was in a severe car accident and suffered um, a you know a head injury that they're still trying to figure out 
And this has all become part of the story of the comforting, of, of, bringing, of bringing love and saying, no, it's not perfect. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything is going to be rainbows and unicorns. But like the, old, the Buddhist expression, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. What's the difference? Your resistance. Now, were I not doing what it is that we're doing and sharing what it is that's being shared with us to share, I would probably... I don't know what I would be doing, but I know that because answer, of what we're doing, <laughs> because of what we're doing, I have moved into acceptance. I'm finding the blessing, the the ability, the the necessity of staying in the now, the the uh, necessity of not holding on to the past, of not thinking about when is this going to be over, of just staying in the now and bringing the comfort and realizing the greatest healing that I'm doing is by offering healing to others. And you in know, the now, it all happens in the story. now. Yep. You know, even reconnecting with your loved ones in spirit, it can only happen in the now. You, you're living in the past and drowning in, you know, the pain of what was or living in the future. You're not reconnecting. We connect in the now. I have had such a great time connecting with you both in the now. Can you believe this, this show flew so fast? We only have three minutes left. And I was thinking, well, first of all, I'm going to just put here the the URL soultwinmessiah.love. That's where everyone can find out about the, the whole movement and all about your music releases. And then there's a YouTube video link I put just below that. In the last couple minutes, what is the parting message you would like to leave everyone with? This isn't about us. This is about all of us. This isn't our movement. This is our movement. This is all about us coming together to bring comfort to one another. It's not about Kip and Evan or a song doing anything. It's about us saying we have an opportunity right now to heal one another and to come together and reprogram each other. And, and we're feeling, we feel very blessed that the universe, whatever, has shared this with us to share with everyone. But it's not about us. This is our comfort new movement. That's wonderful. I don't have any lofty goals. I'm not here to change the world or declare myself as such. Um, I am following my heart, staying present. And it's amazing how many synchronicities and green lights and doors open along the way without trying to do anything. Just being authentic, present, and keep creating and keep following my heart, following my gut, following my instincts and um, being discerning about uh, you know my time and energy and where I direct that and it feels good it feels right it feels productive and it feel and, and now that we have this body of work I mean we have over 200 videos that we've made for our soul documentary YouTube channel um, we have again about 90 songs that we've written 18 that we've recorded and a bunch on deck you know ready to do if, if we keep pressing on in the studio um, so Again, this is all quite new. Um, the website address that you have, soultwinmessiah.love, that's our, our musical website. Um, it's due for a little bit of a refresh and there isn't really anything about comfort you on it yet. We, we have the domain comfortyou.love. We haven't used it yet. We haven't populated it yet. Don't go there. You won't find anything, but you will. And it's gonna be a page attached to the Soul Twin Messiah site that's just comfort you and that's all coming soon again this is like the very first little announcement introduction to the world and uh, hi we're here we love you we offer you comfort and support and we've got a lot of really fun interesting um nurturing supportive uh stuff coming very very soon down the pike uh in addition to all the stuff we already have going that you can see now of course and if not, please message us uh through you know instagram youtube through our website However, you'd like to get, and if you have thoughts on what you'd like to comfort you to be, or what your ideas on what comfort you is, please share them with us. Help us grow this. Help us build this. This isn't something we can do alone, nor do we want to do it alone. It's so wonderful. I'm so glad that you both came on the show. It was an honor to have you share the launch of this new music and movement. And I just say my door and my heart is always open to you guys. Whenever you have something new you want to share, just come on back. All right. Thank love you, you so, so much, much Jamie. Jamie. So much love. Bye, guys. Take bye care of everyone. Yourself. Thanks bye for bye.
This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and 